All right, in this video, I'm going to be playing around with some faces. This is for a page in my comic Tusk. I'll put the link down below to the final page, which will link you actually to the entire comic in case web comics are of any interest to you. Um, <clears throat> mostly, this these four panels here are having to do with different facial expressions. So. Uh, I've selected these drawings specifically just to look at some of the the kind of unique challenges that I've run into when doing facial expressions as opposed to faces in a neutral position. The first thing I like to do is get lots of reference. I almost always draw with references even when the panels in the comic book are quite small mostly just because I feel like the more I draw from nature, the more I learn as an artist. So uh, unless I paint myself into a corner and can't find any reference for what I want to draw, I try to work with reference wherever I can. So one thing, uh, most of these references are either found on, on Google or a lot of screen captures from TV shows and stuff. Uh, I prefer to capture references from videos because that way you get these sort of in-between moments when people are talking or, or, dis or distorting their faces in these sort of ways that fall in between the frames and that's what I like the best as opposed to a very posed kind of uh, face or posed reference. One thing about facial expressions is that the the faces the human face is very mobile or significantly mobile. So uh, there are tons of methodologies or models for laying out the head and laying out the fac facial features to sort of check for proportions and relationships that generally utilize a neutral face but when the flesh and muscles start to get distorted when someone is expressing themselves, those markers tend to get not so valid. So a lot of what I'm doing when I'm laying out the face is I'm using the immobile markers, which are the bones. So I'm spending a little extra time laying out the features of the skull, like the eye sockets, cheekbones, the teeth, uh, where the jawline is, especially, especially the teeth, because as the mouth kind of starts to distort in, let's say, a grimace or some sort of making some sort of phoneme of voice, the teeth will stay there, but the lips might move considerably away from a neutral position. So I want to find those immobile markers first and get those nailed down or reasonably nailed down before I start putting all sorts of unusual mobile things on top of it. Like you can see in the face in the upper right corner, his, his eyes are doing slightly different things. His nose is sort of squeezed up to one side as he's smirking and his lips are clearly asymmetrical uh, and, and not, so nothing is necessarily nicely lined up, but the bones are, so I prefer to lay out the bones uh, in this in the face that I'm drawing right now it's not entirely so critical because her face is pretty much neutral uh, the only thing that's really distorting are her eyelids because the eyeballs are looking to the side and that's a very subtle thing that you might not notice just by glancing at a photograph but as a as a real-life person talking to someone in real life our brains are definitely evolved to pick up on those very subtle things like the shape of the eyelids as the eyes are moving and and uh, what kind of emotion is is being expressed just by very small changes in things like a nostril or an eyelid. Uh, obviously the eyebrows are a much bigger feature so that's 
those are more obvious, but there's a lot of tiny stuff that is almost invisible that I believe it's to the benefit of the artist to sort of exaggerate some of those small things a little bit to, to drive home the emotion of, of the character. What I'm doing right now is the inking part of, of the page. Uh, my inking style is pretty minimal, sort of more of a European style than let's say the American, classic American comic book style of inking. And my, my whole rendering style is kind of more photorealistic. So you might be wondering why am I doing inking at all? Uh, because that makes it look less photorealistic and more like like a, a drawing. Uh, for for practical reasons, doing inking is just a huge time saver because I could very easily use just value and edge quality to define my masses, define space, define forms, but it just takes a lot longer if I put a black line and say this is the edge of my significant objects the viewer understands that and uh, really I can do it pretty quickly if I have to subtly manipulate values and edges it, it increases my drawing time significantly and in comics the name of the game is volume and speed so the faster you can draw something the more efficiently you can draw something, the better off you are as a comic book artist. So any no no trick is too cheap, no shortcut is too dirty, so I just uh, use those inks to to speed things up quite a bit. So I've jumped ahead a little bit. I've put in my flats, I've put in my background colors since this page is really about the emotions of the characters and the dialogue. I didn't need to go nuts with the background. I just put one background in there. They're standing on a ship and I put a rendering of my 3D model back there and just sort of washed it out with gray, but I don't want the environment to really intrude very much here. I'm starting with the, my simplest face first to sort of get myself warmed up a little bit and there's a few things that I'm doing here one one thing I should point out is I, I'm, I'm using a lot of brushes set to the multiply or the overlay blend mode so I'm not using a, an opaque brush I'm I'm what color I end up with has a lot to do with what colors underneath it so I'm creating lots of unknown surprise colors based on random blending and the reason I do that is because in the natural world it's very rare to see a flat even color and on skin it's even rarer because skin in most cases is either quite translucent or a little bit translucent and has all sorts of systems underneath it such as capillaries, bones, fat, and all of that is influencing the color of the skin. So you can see her face is considerably more orangey and red, whereas her shoulder is a cooler green. And then that on, on the left side of her face is that reflected light which is really more about the environment. It's more the blue of the sky kind of reflecting on that side of her face. But the point I'm making is, even though we'll, we'll say, well, that's, that's a green character, green people don't exist, so all bets are off, I'm still using my general rules of coloring to add a lot of variety of color to make that form look more alive. And also with this character, you know, she has green skin, her lips are black, she has those big tusks coming out of her mouth, so not exactly a common or realistic human face. So again, any bets are off, but uh, I can still 
try to use the cues of reality to convince the viewer that this is like like a real a real entity even though she's made up so i'm working on the next face now and this is again just as i was talking about the with the green character there are some unique things i'm trying to convey here in other words this character is supposed to be an albino so her skin is kind of unique kind of a challenge because if you look at people who are this pale or who, or who have no pigmentation it's kind of difficult to read the forms of their face it all kind of blows out to white one big contributor to this is that with no pigmentation light will penetrate deeply beneath the surface of the skin and then bounce all over the place so the the skin is almost luminous in some way which conspires to to blow out the highlights even more so the name of the game is subtlety you can see i'm putting in the cheekbones i'm putting in kind of the 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 muscles around the mouth as highlights but i have to be careful not to fall into the trap of really over rendering those um this is this goes back to what i was saying earlier where the human eyes evolved to pick up a lot of subtleties but if you try to draw those subtleties too heavily in a drawing it's going to start looking like some sort of like an aerial photo of a mountain range or something and there's just going to be way too much uh stuff going on and i have to go back to the simple fact that most faces and heads are kind of roughly a sphere at the end of the day so i have to keep that overall kind of bright on top darker on the bottom or wherever the light is coming from and then everything else is very subtle uh, and also on 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 the green character down at the the bottom right i've kind of over overdone that uh, th there's a little bit too much going on i m i frequently will go back with just an opaque giant airbrush and sort of flatten everything out a little bit just to make everything more subtle uh, which is obviously a technique that I can use in Photoshop. You wouldn't want to do that with watercolors. You'd have to strategize things a lot more in in physical media, but in digital media, you know, again, any no shortcut is too cheap. So uh, I just sort of go back and make big adjustments at the very end. I'm working on the most distorted face right now uh, where um, it's even more tempting to fall into the trap of over rendering stuff and and really um, adding too much detail and you can see in the reference photos both of the the, the woman smirking and the the bald man in the middle of the picture if you squint your eyes, there's they're mostly one kind of shade and just a few little highlights, a few little shadows here and there. And you can see in my drawing, there's a lot more. If you squint your eyes, there's a lot more going on. So I've, I've overdone this, but I don't, I don't care at this point. I just want to get that information in there. And then I will go back and kind of take information out or sort of uh, conceptually smear it and flatten it a little bit so that uh, it just doesn't get too complicated um, and like I said I've really this video is just about the faces uh, I, I sort of skipped over a lot of the other parts of the compositions and uh, I'll, I'll go in I'll, I'll sort of show well, this is now the final page right here. Uh, far from perfect, but it's a comic book. Perfection is rarely the name of the game 
it's more about getting that emotional impact down and and in my opinion facial expressions really help drive home the narrative you could say in a comic book well you've got dialogue boxes people you can just have people say how they feel but adding a second layer of subtlety of of even small things like just the the angle of an eye or the the uh shape of an eyelid really goes a long way to reinforce that dramatic presence and the the personalities of the characters so uh that's about it this uh, like i said this is the the final here of these four panels uh i hope that was helpful and i will talk to you again the next time all right take care everybody bye